Reese Witherspoon. Welcome to Fandango Frontrunners. It's exciting. I am very happy to have you here. It's my favorite thing to go to movies on Mondays. Oh, really? Uh -huh. You've got the whole theater to yourself. I know, exactly. <laughs> Let's see if yellow and orange go together. This is your chair. Cute. Okay. Have a seat. Perfect. Reese, it's really great to see you today. So great to see you. Thank you for joining me. You know, this is such an exciting time in your career. You have your second Oscar nomination for Wild. You know how much I love this movie. We've talked about it. I know, you're so great. When you think back to earlier in your life, earlier in your career, is there a moment or an experience that really sticks out as a pivotal moment for you? First of all, the first movie I ever got was such an interesting experience because I went in to be an extra, basically. I read an ad in the paper. I was living in Nashville, Tennessee. And this is I, Man in the Moon. Man in the Moon. And, you know, I went in and auditioned, and I didn't hear anything for a month, and then, you know, then I heard from the director was the director of To Kill a Mockingbird, and I had to come to L.A. I'd never been to Los Angeles or the West Coast, and I did a screen test, and then about a month later, I got the part. And it was kind of amazing, too, because I, I have no formal training, really, but that director, Robert Mulligan, really spent time with me, and he was just an incredibly patient man, and I will always be appreciative for the time he took with me. But talk about jumping right into the deep end. I mean, a lot of people, as teen actors, work their way up. They'll start with a bit part or something, and you had your first role as the lead role of the movie. That must have been so scary. Well, I, can't, I didn't understand, really, that it was such a big deal, so that I had that in my advantage. Um, <laughs> my second audition ever was... <laughs> was for Cape Fear with Martin Scorsese because the DP had shot Man on the Moon and he suggested me for the part. So Mr. Scorsese flew me up to New York and I was supposed to read with the lead actor, but I didn't know who that was. So I was sitting on the plane and this man, a businessman, turns to me. I was 14 years old in a Laura Ashley dress. And he goes, <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing, little girl? Like, where are you going? I said, well, I'm going to New York to audition for a movie. And he said... Well, who, who is in the movie? I said, somebody named Robert De Niro. Oh, no. <laughs> and he, the man, like, literally was like, are you kidding me? He's like the greatest American actor of all time. I had no idea who he was. Wow. No clue who Martin Scorsese was. Nothing. Needless to say, I bricked the audition. Right. Hi, Juliette Lewis. Welcome to the <laughs> role of a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I started shaking. I literally did not stop shaking until I walked out of the room. Wow. Robert De Niro had to finish all my lines because I literally like, c -c 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 couldn't say the line. But it was a great experience, you know, and, and I remember Robert De Niro being so kind because then I saw him like seven years later, I auditioned for another one of his movies. He's like, I remember you. I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> He's like, you were so nervous. He's like, you've gotten better. All right, speaking of getting better, I want to take a look at what probably is my favorite scene from my favorite movie of 2014. Aww. And this is a scene of you near the end of the movie Wild, where your character Cheryl Strayed has finished this huge hike, and she encounters a really interesting pair of people uh, near the end of her journey. So take this remote, we're gonna watch okay. this scene together and pause it and talk about it. Here's you in Wild. Okay. Uh, and I'm Vera, and this is Kyle. I'm Cheryl. Are you enjoying your hike today? I'm having a wonderful time, thank you very much for asking. You're so polite. Okay, we have to start by talking about this little boy. He's amazing. Evan O'Toole is his Evan name. Evan O'Toole, yes. And he was super committed to this, wasn't he? Yes. He came in so prepared and so polite and so um, just by the book. And it was so interesting because I thought, oh, he's being very, you know, polite and a little, like, formal. And then I went back and looked at the book and it said, I met the most polite, formal little boy. And we had a very stilted conversation. And then he said to me, can I sing you a song? So the kid had read the book. <laughs> the kid had, <laughs> I mean, it was crazy how much he understood what that was. And he's so little. That's great that he was so prepared. All right, well, it continues. We're just out for the weekend, rain or no. Yeah. Where is my grandma? She's looking after me because I have some problems. I'm not supposed to talk about with strangers. I love that look on your face. It's this kind of surprise, and is this an okay conversation to be having, and what should I do, right? Right, yeah. yeah. I think, you know, Cheryl immediately senses in him that there's something that she sees in herself. Mm. Definitely. All right, let's see what happens. Well, you don't have to talk about them. But you know, everybody has problems. I have problems too. What I notice when I watch this scene is the peace with which 
you speak as Cheryl. Mm -hmm. I think because she's gone through this journey and there has been a lot of anger, but she's coming out the other side. Is that where you see this yeah, happening? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, this is Cheryl sort of maturing. And as we get to the end of the, the movie, we start to see in the script and in the story that she has become the Cheryl that I know now, which is a person who can reflect on the experience and see it not just as the negative, but that there are so many beautiful blessings in having, um, you know, interruptions in your life or great pain in your life doesn't always have to be a negative. It can be this, this learning experience. Yeah. All right, let's keep watching. What kinds of problems? Well, I mean, I have problems with my dad. I don't see him anymore. Me neither. What about your mommy? She died. I mean, you just have to be so gentle when you're imparting news like that to a little child, even if it's someone the child doesn't know. Yeah, but there's something so clear about a child, you know. It's interesting, she goes on this whole journey, no one really asked her specifically what happened. This is the first person that's asked her exactly what happened. And did you and Cheryl talk about this moment? Because she was on set a lot. Yeah, this moment was preceded by a, <laughs> we didn't put it in the movie, but it was a rant about how mad she is at her mother. It comes out of a great moment of anger at her mother. Mm. How dare you leave me? How dare I didn't get to be a petulant teenager and yell at you and then grow up and then realize the error of my ways and apologize. Mm. So she actually feels very robbed before she sees him. Okay, here we go. But you know, problems don't stay problems. They turn into something else. How did she die? Um, she got very sick. This is where you start to feel even more of the emotional weight of this. Did you film this near the end of the process? Were you able to shoot in some kind of order? Yeah, this was towards the end, and Cheryl was there this day, and I, knew, I remember being really nervous that I was, it was hard for me to pull this off, but um, in front of her, because it is the most... It's the biggest breakdown she has. She said I, she walked for 90 days and she didn't cry until the very, very, very end, which I thought was incredible. <laughs> I would have cried every day. She said she only cried once. It was this day. But she, um, I think there's something interesting about having to deal with your emotions in front of a child. Like a lot of people have said, the only reason I got through the death of my mother is because I had kids and I didn't have a choice to lay down and mm. feel sorry for myself. And so this is kind of the first thing where you see, I'm going to have to figure out a way to say this stuff in my life and I'm gonna have to figure out a way to move on. So I think that's, it's really kind of a beautiful moment where she's learning how she's gonna have to proceed. And something magical is about to happen here. My mother's a singer. She's taught many songs. Oh, really? Would you like to hear one? Yeah. From this valley they say you are leaving. We shall miss your bright eyes and sweet smile. For you take with you all of the sunshine that it brightened our pathway a while. How did this affect you? Oh I mean, God. I can't, I can hardly even see it without. I had kidding. no idea that's what that little boy was going to do. I remember that on the day, just listening to him because Jean Marc shot him first, and I just burst into tears. He's such a soulful little person, and he said it. He sang it with such heart, and he just. I don't know, it just got to the heart of me. Um, and the fact that this really happened, like it's, almost at the end of her hike, and it's there in the book, this little serious voice sang her Red River Valley, and it's just profound, you know, what the universe brings into your life when you're least expecting it, and that can be an incredibly healing moment. Well, it's my favorite moment in my favorite movie, so thank you so much for thank talking you. about it. Yeah. If you have not seen Wild, please do yourself a favor and check it out. And thank you so much for watching Fandango Frontrunners. So, Reese, to thank you for joining us today, we have made for you your very own oh. Reese Witherspoon as Cheryl Strayed Fandango gift card. I love so, that. take your family to the movies. I gotta go to the movies. And right enjoy. Now. <laughs> thank you. I love this. Now, follow me. I know you like a selfie. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. All right. Great to see you. Bye, honey. All right. Talk to you soon.